Hello, and welcome to Authentic Magic. I'm Volva Das Wild. My friends know me as Sissy. My sister circles know me as Sissy. And tonight, because it's tonight for you guys, I'm coming to you with this concept of authentic magic. So there is a PDF that you can find in the LHC shit store. Yours will be blue when you print it out. I print it out from the Word document so it doesn't have the color. Quick thing, you can set your printer to go in black and white. You don't have to put all the colors in here, but if you want the beautiful colors, you can do that. I go in black and white authentically. I want to tell you that the color distracts from my following along with the concept. So that's what I do. Why did this workshop come about? Because we live in an aesthetically driven world. We live in a situation where people push, push, push to achieve, accumulate, and gather as much as they can at all costs. And that is not how real magic is made. We go into this situation where you resonate, you read, you gather, you follow different teachers, and you go in deep to discover the things you're looking for. And somehow in that process, we lose ourselves. We lose why we wanted magic. We lose why we wanted to pursue it. We lose how it originally came to us. Everyone has an abracadabra moment when they move into magic. It could be your first candle spell. It could be your first Samhain. It could be your first gathering. You go with a group of women to do a spiritual thing and you find out that you want a little deeper of a spiritual thing. Not a little bit, you want a lot and you want it all. And that's the danger that comes with our magic. We can start and we can modify our needs we can change our surroundings. We can buy the right books. We can acquire all the tools and still not have our magic. You need to understand authentic magic is your brand of magic. We're all familiar with brands, correct? Llewellyn's, McDonald's, Nike, and all these brands have a motto, like Burger King, have it your way. And what we fail to realize is your magic. You should have a personal mantra for yourself. Why do you not know your mantra? Why do you not know what makes your magic tick? Why do you not know these things? Because some teacher told you it wasn't important. Some person in the magical community condemned you from seeking that magic because that gate was closed and that gate was closed and that gate was closed and that gate was closed. And, was closed. and every time you went to a new gate, you got the door slammed in your face. New brooms deal with it all the time. They come in, they learn things, and then they ask the question, how do I do shadow work? And some accomplished magical person who knows their magic, by the way, who knows their authentic magic, who knows what makes them tick, tells them, you're not ready for shadow work, back off. That's dirty magic. You have no right to close the door to another practitioner, another magical worker, another magical being, another human being on something they choose to follow. That is not your right. I don't care how long you've been doing this game. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your level is. You do not have the right to tell another magical worker what to do, what is right for them. Oh, I'm going to let that sit for a minute. That's not going to make me any friends. You're either going to hate me at the end of this or you're going to fucking love me. There's not an in-between. I have a big problem with mentors, educators, leaders, condemning people for pursuing their happiness. Do you know why magical people aren't happy? Because they're not in their magic. 
authentic magic brings authentic joy and authentic magical results. You want to manifest, you want to release, you want to heal, then you need to find your authentic beat in the universe. Okay, sissy, I'm in. How do I do this? You fucking work. You fucking look at yourself. You fucking take personal inventory. So in this PDF, I'm going to pass the what is the authentic magic because, you know, that's the opening page. We don't need that. Interview yourself. The current status of your magic. What am I doing? What moon phases do I do? Do I even new, do moon phases? Do I have a magical planner? Do I look at things? Do I know a deity I like to work with? Do I know my favorite element? Do I know this? Do I know that? You know what kind of soda you like. You know your favorite drink at a bar. You know how you like your toast. You know how you like strawberries or if you don't like strawberries. You know what kind of car is your favorite. You know which heart throb in a movie makes your, your heart go pitter patter. You know what your favorite band is. You know what your favorite candy is. Why don't you know what your favorite crystal is? Why don't you know what your favorite moon is? Why don't you know what your favorite season is? Why don't you know what your favorite smell magically is? Because you haven't taken time to know yourself. You want to have a relationship with all the elements and the deities and everything else, but you don't know yourself. How are you going to go out and date the magical world until you fucking know yourself? So I implore you, answer these questions about yourself. Figure it out. What's your favorite herb? What's your favorite tea? What's your favorite coffee? What's your favorite smell? What's your favorite incense? Yes, all these things, all the things. Which know thyself. Know thyself and move forward in this happiness and this excitement and this joy, authentic joy for your craft. Oh, I got a moon coming up. Oh, I hate staying up for moons. I hate doing this. So if you're not a night owl, be an early riser. Meet the moon before she meets the sun. Look at that. You can, ex you can observe a moon phase by getting early, early, early up in the morning rather than staying up late, late, late at night. What? I can do that? Yes, you can fucking do anything you want to do. Do you know who tells you you can't? People who aren't in their magic. That's who does that. Unhappy practitioners point out bullshit in other things. I am too busy writing, reading, smelling, tasting, making wax, making candles, making decorations for my Yule tree to worry about what the rest of the magical world is fucking doing right now. I don't care. I know a solstice is coming. I know the divine is bringing me a big old dose of solar collective Awen energy at that solstice. And I'm ready. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, I'm ready for my solstice gift. That's what I'm doing right now. I, I took inventory and I realized that I was putting all these things in front of my magic and I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to put shit in front of my magic because what if I miss something the universe has for me? What if I miss that authentic, beautiful bite of what the universe has for me? Listen, I have taken inventory on myself and I'm going to tell you what I found out. I am extra cheese, extra fries, extra pickles on the side. I am extra. My authentic magic is extra. I want the pretty bow on the jar. I want the beautiful wax to seal the spell jar. I want the most beautiful herbs. I want the most fragrant teas. I want the most exciting things to read because I'm extra. I'm an extra witch. I'm an extra extrovert extra witch. And I'm okay with it. I'm feral and I don't care. So inventory yourself, take inventory of those things. We got really into that point, right? Cool, because I think that one's important. Review and inventory your past moon rituals, releases and Sabbath practices that you have completed. 
That would require you're keeping magical records. Are you doing that? People in their authentic magic keep records. Why? Because if you're putting all this work into your spell work, you want to fucking know if it, if it worked out, right? Books are cheap. No books are cheaper. Remember that. Review your divination methods that you have found most helpful, but were also a joy for you to practice. Do you love playing with your pendulum? Playing. Yes, playing. If you love your magic, you are playing and working in your magic. It has a playful energy. It's not a chore. It's a joy. Authentic joy, right? Yeah. We're going to fucking bust this out. I know we are. You will find your authentic magic in the aspects of your practice that align and foster your ongoing growth. Fuck you, sissy. That's what you're all thinking right now, right? Fuck you, sissy. That's right. You will find the aspects of your practice that you are good at, that have ease, and they are wonderful for you. They're going to lead you in your divine path. How do you find your gift? You follow your joy. Do not confuse alignment with comfort. Becoming aligned does not always mean it will be easy. You're going to have to move along the path, do things you're enjoying, but at the same time, temper that joy and understand, okay, well, I am going to have to do a little bit of shadow work to get me on level that this gift works a whole lot better. Fear stands in the way of growth. If you are afraid to fail, you will never succeed. You have to throw fear out the window if you're looking for your authentic magic. You're like, this lady's crazy. I am. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so here's an authentic magic inventory. If you haven't bought the PDF, get writing, pause in between. How do you describe yourself as a magic worker? I am fucking feral. And now we have established I am extra, extra. What do you consider is your strongest area of focus in your magic? Shadow work. Shadow work is my, my strongest focus. How many days a week do you journal your magical journey? Don't lie here. Come on, be honest. How many days a week do you journal? How many? Come on, don't lie. I, I, I see you. I know you're lying. I know you are. Three? Are we being generous? Three? You should be journaling three to five days a week. You're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Journaling's not an hour at a time. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. It can be 10 minutes. And this isn't a dear diary situation. This is, I walked into the moon and I felt the warmth. Yes, you can feel warmth in the moon. The light of the moon can give you warmth. It can warm your soul. Those are the kind of things you're journaling. I went to the supermarket and grabbed several bunches of herbs and I hung them and I'm ready to use them in spell work. That's journal worthy stuff right there. How does the word authentic feel within your current description of your magic? Are you printing off the PDFs and not using them? Are you saving all that stuff on Pinterest and never bother to do it? Do you buy all the supplies and send them to the side and never do it? Do you have imposter syndrome? You want to be magic, but you don't know if you are magic. So you're not going to try because you're not sure. And what if you're not and you do something and you go to hell? It just got out of control real fast, right? <laughs> That's how your brain works, right? It's the slippery slope of magic. Stop. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's put a little authentic in it. Do something simple you can complete. When you complete that level of simple, you move on to the next level that you can complete. And then you move on to the next level that you complete. And by the end of time, you're hexing a bitch, putting her in a jaw, burying her in the yard, and you are, whoa, authentic hexer. Don't talk that talk if you're not willing to walk that walk. And sometimes walking that walk means you're gonna fall on your face. Do you understand? You will fail. You will survive. You will survive and you will try again. And then 
you will thrive. Do you understand? It's a pattern. Stop halting the progress. If you don't try, you halt the progress. That's how it works. Boom. Ready? Cool. Next. When you seek others to confirm your magic, do you see them as teachers or peers? Who do you go to to verify your magic? Fucking nobody. That's what I want to hear out of you. Fucking nobody. The universe. That's who confirms your magic. If you are going to the people around you to confirm your magic to get an atta girl, you are not sure of your authentic magic. Atta girls are great, but universal approval, Mwah! chef's kiss. That's good shit. How do you plan your magic? Well, we know what that means. Do you not do anything and knock yourself off as a chaos witch? Yeah, that's not a plan. That's an excuse. Planning takes a little time. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? What's your needs in this moon? Did you read about the moon? Do you care about the moon? Do you have Moonly on your phone and don't even fucking look at it? Cancel the subscription. Because you got issues. Stop buying, acquiring, and gathering shit you have no intention to use. That is hoarding. Hoarding comes later when you need all the herbs and all the books. And that comes later when you find your authentic magic. Calm down. Wait a minute. It's okay. I got more good things to say. What is your first response to a personal emergency? Shit's going bad in your life. When you stop to take inventory and make a plan, what is the first thing you bring in? I know what mine is. I'm curious what yours is. Comment it under the video. How do you magically fit? How do you magical failure to thrive? How do you magically fail? And why don't you thrive? Because you're standing in the middle of the road going, no, I'm done. I'm done. This is way too much work. I'm done. That's not how we thrive. Continuing on despite of our failure, that's thriving. Courage does not exist where you are not terrified. You have to be afraid to be courageous. Remember that. Who or what is your most magical influence in your current walk? No, 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 it's not me, is it? That would be amazing. Sorry. <laughs> magical ego. <laughs> Who is my big magical influence? I'm really impressed at the current moment with the new brooms who are courageous enough to stand up and take their turn. I love it. I love women and men who stand forward when everything says that they shouldn't be able to do what they do and they do it. I love path lighters. I love lighthouses in the magical community. People who do things that no one said they could. I'm a huge Dolsky fan. Here we are heathen, here we are holy. I believe that the heathen pagan path can change this world. I believe the divine healing energy will heal us all. And I believe acceptance of things that we once thought would never be acceptable will change our path as humans. That's my magical influences. What are yours? This is going to be the most difficult section of the workshop for you. Okay. You're going to have this on YouTube. You can come back and refer to it whenever you want, but I'm going to give you an assignment at the end of this to find your authentic magic. I would like you to clearly write an explanation of your authentic magic as a result of this inventory. How do you feel each of these various aspects will impact your personal statement of your authentic magic? We often look to others to gather our personal impression of ourselves. Just this once, I'm asking you to sit with yourself. I'm asking you to take time with yourself. And I'm asking you to be fucking authentic with yourself and write this. Do you understand? I'm asking you and you alone 
to chart your magical journey. I'm asking you to set your magical course. I'm asking you to reach into that heart, adjust that compass, and know where you want to go. Not where someone else tells you you want to go. Where you want to go. Because that is the shit. That is the magical chutzpah that is missing in this world. You can have it all. You can have every planner. You can have every almanac. You can have every encyclopedia. You can have every deity on your altar. If you don't know who you are, how is any of this going to work? It's not. It's not going to work. And you can try and try and try and push and push and push, but yet you'll just be pulling emptiness because you are fucking magic as you say you are. That has been my mantra for the last five years. Do you know why? Because every time I stand up at my altar, every time I ready a candle, every time I do a spell bottle, every time I write a shadow work, I realize this is coming from nowhere but me and my divine path with the universe. My ability to channel what is said to me and trust my intuition that what I'm hearing is magical is the key. I believe in myself. I am asking you to step up, write a clear definition of your authentic magic and fucking believe in yourself. If you can't believe in yourself, come see me. I'll believe in you until you believe in yourself. Everyone has the right to magic. Everyone has the right to personal growth. Everyone has the right to feel like they are special. Because you are. There is no one just like you. There was no, never, ever going to be someone just like you. And there's no one that will ever going to know and be able to tell you your authentic magic. That's a decision for you. So thank you for joining me tonight. It has been my honor and privilege to bring this oracle driven message to you. I implore you, get out your decks of cards, get out your pendulum, get out your runes, get out your charms, get out your bones, get out your journals and start investigating what your authentic magic looks like. You're magic because you fucking say you are. Till next time, take care.